I'll never forget it. But anyways, I, I don't know about y'all. They got global warming, maybe, maybe not. I don't know where you stand. It doesn't really matter. But uh, as far as I'm concerned, the lack of snow, for the most part, is a good thing for me. I enjoy it. Not having a shovel, not having a plow. Snowmobilers are on the other side, the ice fishermen, not so much. So. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we had snow for Christmas, and then Paul's feeling better, right? I was going to call you to see about Monday morning, <laughs> so let me know. And I uh, got some new visitors today, uh, some old friends here today, and we just like to welcome everybody. And uh, just, uh, man, from the bottom of my heart, however you want to put it, from my very soul, we're just here to worship God, amen? amen. Leave your troubles, your cares, your worries at the door, take them to the altar, give them to the Lord. Uh, the one thing I do want to announce, uh, I'm kind of in between, you know, always working, trying to make things good here, because uh, worship should be about God, period. And um, so I'm thinking after the Christmas season, we'll do announcements first, and then have a call to worship. We'll do a call to worship, then the announcements. So I'm going to play with that just before we're born. Try it both ways. So if, uh, when we do it, let me know. Well, let me you know. Give me your input. So I appreciate that. But uh, like I say, it's been a good week here. Uh, God, personally, just to share with you guys, has been with me uh, in so many ways. And uh, we won't get into that, but uh, God is good, amen. amen. I just say, God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Uh, so many of my prayers are answered and reinforced this week. So Vivian's here, so that's good. Cam, how are you doing? Yeah, good. So, Dale, how you doing? Hey, perfect. Good. Yeah, you smile. <laughs> so, just so you know, some of you smile more. Sermons and announcements, I tend to look at you more. Group day, you got a big smile, so I'm going to stay with you. But anyways, who else has some uh, prayer concerns and announcements? And yes, Michelle. I just wanted to remind anyone who was wanting to go to the Chris Tomlin concert, if anyone is interested, please sign up on the bulletin board and then um, give the money to either Donita or myself and so we can purchase all the tickets at once so we can have a seating for all of us together. <coughs> so Chris Tomlin concert coming up. So the Mortal Mayor, last year we went to Sidewalk Profits. We had about 15 of us. That was a really good time. That was an awesome week. This one's over in Michigan City. Don't worry about a ride. Somebody will take you. So that is good. Uh, Rick? You want to talk about your uh, stepbrother? My stepbrother, um, well, let's back up a little bit. My dad passed away on January 2nd, a year ago. On the same day, my stepbrother, who claimed my dad is his dad also, um, he had a, a stroke and they put him in the hospital and his brain was swelled, so they did surgery a couple of days ago. But he hadn't at that time um, made any progress, but at least his brain hadn't swelled up anymore. But um, yesterday, I don't know if I even told Scott this yet. Um, he did open one eye and was able to squeeze his wife's hand. Amen. So that's a good sign. And we'll keep praying, but we'll know more on Monday. They're going to try some more tests on him Monday. I pray he comes back normal. What's his name again? His name is Tim Pitzinski.
got some rambunctious boys in the sanctuary, and that's a good thing. So, yes. Alright, so Kimmy and Brian's youngest grandson has some COVID issues, and so they're going to check that out. So we pray for you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the Sabbath morning. Sabbath is made for us, not us for the Sabbath. And it's a day of worship, a day of peace, a day of rest. And we just pray your Holy Spirit into this sanctuary, into our hearts, that all we say, all we do is anointed by you, is pleasing to you, that glorifies you, is truly from your word and from your heart to you. But we just ask your blessing on the names that are raised here, the many more names that were not mentioned. And we pray for our country, for our leaders, that they be strong, that they be godly, that the people you have placed in power uh, to reveal truth and also to reveal evil so that people know that uh, evil is real, but that in the end, you are in control, you are the authority, you are the power, and you will overcome every obstacle as proven by the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And so we just bring all these things to you, humbly on our knees. We raise them up to you in prayer, knowing that you are the good, loving Father. And now we will pray the prayer that you taught your disciples many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. It was this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
have way with you. Okay, so when I poured the water in the Sprite, what difference did you see in both of them? Did any of them have like a bubble or a fizz to them? Yes. Which one, Presley? The Sprite. Owen and Aiden, would you say the Sprite had the fizz and the bubbles? Okay, so um, Christians are, sometimes they can be seen as very similar or alike. They're just people who believe in God and think that um, by doing good things that um, they will go to heaven. But the difference with the people that have God in their hearts and know that it's more than just being good and loving one another, that it is also um, being in the Word, going to church, going to children's um, time, and also just showing your love to other people. Would you guys agree with that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So the difference between the, the Sprite and the water is just that um, the, the fizz is just the excitement and also the, the extra, and it, and it tastes a little bit different. Wouldn't you say that the Sprite and water, that the water is just, I don't know, just water, but the Sprite has a little bit of zip to it? Would you, would you agree? Yeah. You guys, you guys need to try, and try some spray to, to, to realize that. You guys, you guys thirsty? No? You good? Okay. All right. Because I, cause I brought this in case you were. So, um, what I'm going to share with you, um, I did share the scripture last week with Presley, but I'm going to share it again this weekend. So, I'm going to have Presley hold the bike or the microphone while I read the scripture. So the scripture reading is 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, 
He is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. So Jesus wants us to be that sprite in everyone's life. He wants us to be bubbly. He wants us to share the word with those that we see. So I know the three of you are nice to your friends and you're always willing to help. And that's what God wants. God wants you to be good to one another, to love your parents, to love your grandparents, to show them that you love them by giving them a hug, giving them a kiss, and telling them you love them. So we're going to go ahead and pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank us, thank you so very much for bringing the kids up here to children's time. Thank you for their families. Thank you for their creation. Thank you for their innocence, for the willingness to love and to be kind to one another. Thank you for their genuine hearts to give hugs, to give kisses, to show that they love one another. I pray that each and every Sunday that they are able to come, that they learn more about you each and every Sunday and also each and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you for coming.
scripture today is from 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 to 14. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world, so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us, and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us, because he has given us of his spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thank you. Amen. All right. So, question is, uh, I know what you'll answer, but very sincerely, does God love you? Oh, yeah. Can you answer that? Man, I mean, what if I had one prayer? Because uh, we all have dark times in our lives, right? We all have blessings. We all have dark times. We all have, as I preach about, uh, you know, I'm a little bit different as a Methodist pastor because I'm uh, completely in, uh, on the spiritual side of things, you know, much more charismatic, even assembly of God. Uh, I don't believe in the foot. I don't flip down the aisles like in the Blues Brothers, but uh, there are demons, amen? There are some, you know, you can have them in the sanctuary, you can have them in your house, you can have them in your heart. There is good, there is bad, there is evil. And it is in this world. If you think you can live your life and Satan's not going to come after you, that just means one of two things. Uh, either you are already evil and Satan doesn't have to come after you because you're already there, or uh, you're just not in the battle. But as Christians, we are called to the battle, amen? Amen. No, David couldn't build the temple because David had fought and fought and fought and had too much blood on his hands. But our job, our goal, and some of you are doing very good, uh, to bring people to the Lord, to bring people to the church. You know, uh, and uh, like I tell anybody, uh, people shouldn't have to ask if you're a Christian. And uh, the Bible clearly teaches, I love the passage, what's in your heart is what comes out of your mouth. So... You know, my favorite team, sports, I grew up playing sports, my dad loves sports, got me into sports, uh, always. Uh, so I like the Detroit Red Wings, but if you talk to me, how long does it take me to get to hockey? The answer is a fairly long time, unless you're a sports dude too, and that's where we're at, but what's the first thing I'm gonna talk about? I'm gonna talk about God, I'm gonna ask where you go to church, I'm gonna ask you uh, all these questions, and it should be our heart. And so, uh, but at the core of everything, if you don't fully believe 100% and know deep in your heart and have it affect everything in your life, that God loves you, truly loves you, then uh, you don't have a good basis. You know, the, the, the story that Jesus told of planting the seeds, and I talked about it this summer at, at length. Uh, your soil, is your soil good? Is it godly soil? You know, and the things that bring us to God, prayer, is scripture, do you read your Bible? Do you know your Bible? Reading your Bible and knowing your Bible are two different things. And so do you, are you learning your Bible? Do you know your Bible? Do you pray? Do you pray for others? Do you forgive? Do you live in that world of mercy? Uh, when you walk into a room, what do you bring into the room? Is it love? Is it judgment? Do you criticize everyone? Or are people glad to see you? And the, the way you gauge that, what do people come to you for? When they're hurting, do they come to you or do they avoid you? Because they know you're going to criticize. They know you're going to tell their stories to other people. And so we are called to be Christians, which is not just to believe in Jesus, but to be Christ-like. And it all begins, it all begins with God. And I have this up here, and uh, we're actually going to be uh, in the Bible today. How many of you own a Bible? How many of you read your Bible every day? How many of you have it memorized? So, that's always the goal. But here, uh, 
It'll seem simple, but it um, could not be more serious. This is what the Holy Spirit put on my heart a few weeks ago for us. This is where we're going to begin. We're going to go through the Bible, read some passages. They all go together. They all preach and teach the same thing. But it is God's heart for you, for us as people, and as a church. So, open your Bible, Genesis 1. That's where I'm at. You guys will all be very familiar with this. It goes with the picture up there. It's a nice picture. That's from the Creation Museum, in case you don't know that there. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and the darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. And so that is the beginning of creation. Where is God's Spirit now? It is still with us. It is still here. It is still with you. It is still touching you. How many of you know and can tell us the story? Can come up here right now if I ask you to tell you how God's Spirit has affected you, how God has talked to you, how angels have come to you. It is a serious prayer. Is that this church? Church becomes so spirit-filled that it is way better than it used to be uh, in accepting these messages. Uh, we want God's Spirit in here in whole. Amen? Amen. And I, taught, I know some other passages, it's not common, but they have seen uh, angels. It was to share His love, to share His compassion, to share everything, to have people to share it with Him. So everything that is here, so if you look outside, see those cornfields? Why is that here? It sustains us, right? You know, Ruth Ann and Rick have made their uh, life off of the soil. Why did God give us that soil to eat? Because he loves us. He wants us to eat. He did not create us and put us on this earth. He did not create this universe, the stars, the moons, uh, the infinite space that goes on forever. He did it all out of love. He did it for you. And when I restart the service, you know, I have to look at somebody and say, Jesus loves you. I pray that that is the truth. And I love to see the joy. And everybody smiles when they say it. And it's a fun time. But it is absolutely the truth. Why is this church here? It's here because God loves us. Why do we have clothes? Because God loves us. Why do you have a car? Because God loves you. Why, was, why were you created? says in the Bible, God knew the hairs on your head when you were in your mother's womb because God loved you and still does and always will. And then uh, 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 we'll read John 1 here in a second if you have your Bibles and want to look that up because it goes with this. Uh, it goes with your heart. God created you from his heart to love you, to show you his love. You are his love manifest. Each one of us. When you look at the person next to you, look at, like I look at Brian and Kimmy, and uh, look at Chris and Chris and Chris. And <laughs> but they are here. We are together. Why? Because God loves us and he calls us to love each other. Now how good are you at loving each other? That's the question. That's the issue in the Bible. You know someone hasn't read the Bible if they say, well, all Christians think they're perfect, or you know someone uh, isn't living the Bible if they think, oh, well, I'm a Christian, so I'm better than you. Yeah, I, uh, I told Rick, I'm not a good sleeper, so between last night and this morning, I read the whole book of Mark. Uh, but, you know, in there it says, uh, Jesus, you know, the big guy says, if you are going to be a servant, if you're going to be like me, if you're going to be truly be my follower, if you want to be first in heaven, you must first be a servant. You're not better than anybody. You are a servant. You are a slave. You are here to help to serve your brothers and sisters. And it starts in your houses. Do the people in your house serve you, or do you serve them? Are you the boss? Are you, hey, I'm the boss. I'm going to tell you what to do. Or are you there to make them feel loved and, and raise them up and help them to feel better and to feel loved? And like I tell you, but the true judge of you is the people in your immediate circle. How do they feel about you? Do they feel loved? 
Do they know their love? If you go to the people that you spend the most time with and ask them, do you know I love you? And they laugh at you or they're like, mm, you're not doing a good job. And he knows and we know, you know, why did Noah have to build an ark? Because their every thought was of evil, because they had gone so astray. And we know in our lives, sometimes we are that person, but we also know that the Holy Spirit fills us and guides us and we can be full of love. We can truly be Christ-like. And so we have the love of creation. Let's see what the second slide is. <laughs> it's, it's a mystery, yes. Yeah. So and now we get to Jesus. Have you all heard of Yeshua, Jesus? So if you go to John 1, one of my favorite passages, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things that were made were made through him. Without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of man. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not and will not ever overcome it. And so we have this love that God created us in love. And it doesn't matter who your mother, your father was. It doesn't even matter uh, abuse of the things you have had to overcome. What God wants for you is to live in his life. How many of you would like a brand new car? How many of you would like a bigger house? But I warn you, there's more to clean, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, but thing is, are you ever, is there, how many, you know, like the Whitney Houston, Chris said you want to see the Whitney Houston movie. She had more money than all of us combined times 10. And yet, you know, that tragic ending because she couldn't find happiness. Even though she believed in the Lord, she wasn't living with that light in her heart. And it leads to tragedy. She had a huge house. She had every car you could, she could possibly want, diamonds. And it does not lead to happiness. People look for joy. Uh, you know, we're in the days, like I talk about pretty much every week, because it's uh, where we live. And I think I need to talk about it as a pastor. Our society is sexually uh, saturated. Turn on the television, everything's about sex. Watch a TV show, commercials. You know, women, if they're half dressed, that's good. You know? And so uh, we live in that world that goes back to the Old, uh, the Old Testament, uh, same thing, you know? With Bathsheba, that temptation is always there. But anywhere you look, anywhere that's that instant gratification, that self-gratification, does it really lead to joy? Does it lead to peace? Does it lead to fulfillment? Does it help you in times of tragedy? And the answer is no. There is only one right answer. There is only one light. There is only one way, and, and some of you uh, right now have some serious personal struggles. But your only peace, your only light, the only truth, the only way to come out of that healthy, mentally and physically, is to live in the light of the Lord, to be in prayer, to accept where you are and how you are, and to move forward with Jesus, because Jesus loves you. Amen? So let's go to the third passage which is Ephesians 4. So if you have your Bible, turn to Ephesians. Because we started with love, right? God created us because he wanted to share his love. We know that Jesus in the Revelation, Jesus is coming again. Why is Jesus coming back? Because he loves us and everything will be made right. And always remember as we talk about love, as we talk about the human condition, as we talk about sin, as we talk about living as Christians, all of those things are made right at the second coming of Christ. Yep. No. Ephesians 4, verse 1. So this is Paul writing, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called. And here's the thing I talk about. With all humility, with all gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love. Eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to the one hope 
that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and he is the Father of all, who is over all, through all, and in all. And so in that passage, uh, you know, we're at the beginning of the year, and one of the reasons the Holy Spirit gave uh, me this message and uh, told me as I was reading these passages and preparing this sermon, now, this is our call this year. Man, it's my prayer. And uh, we know some of you know what we've been through here, uh, but we're purging evil, amen? Right. This needs to be a body united. And it's not just united because we're in agreement, it's united in love. And uh, the example I always use, because you guys will laugh, but it just shows how many of you love Notre Dame. Yeah, see, you'll be a good one, because some of you don't love Notre Dame at all. Some of you do, and how many of you love Michigan, and you'll get the same reaction. So on those things, you're not going to be united. How many of you love spaghetti? That's my favorite meal. Some people don't like spaghetti at all, you know? And those things, how important are any of those things? How important is the carpet? How important all these things? We need to maintain God's house. It's nice. But what is the most important thing always? Worship God and love each other. And as we move forward, this is an important year. As we grow as a church, as we grow in numbers, which we continue to do, uh, keep inviting people to church. This is a good thing. This is a good church. And it will grow, and it is growing. And uh, to grow in the Spirit. For God to touch our hearts, for us to open our mouths, to us to know our Bible, to share our hearts. When God works in your life, are you supposed to hide it under a bushel? No. Yeah, let it shine. The little kids sing it. Your light. Your light is the love of God inside of you. How bright is your light? How united is this church? This church is becoming very United. I invite you all, we're uh, beginning in a new book in Bible study, and it's uh, 16 messages from the cross. That's Thursday night at 6, so if you can make it, we're starting that part. Uh, and that's awesome, because Jesus loves us, amen? And if I ask you why Jesus died on the cross, you'll tell me to forgive our sins, but there's so much more there. And Jesus died, God loves us to make us whole. God created each one of you out of love. Amen? All in agreement. How many of you feel like you are completely and in full that person in which God created you to be? Yeah, that's a whole different question. And the answer for most of us is, eh, I'm not all the way there. I know I'm not. I know I continue to work. I know God loves me. I know Jesus died on the cross for me. But I also know I got things to work on. Always. And so he's, that, that book's important. It's Randy Clark. And uh, but we continue to learn. It's a good thing. Like I say, the, the Bible is God's word. Jesus is the Logos, the living word. And so it all works hand in hand. And so we've talked about love at the beginning of the Bible. We've talked about love at the end of the Bible. Here we're in the New Testament. We have Paul uh, called by Jesus to preach to the Gentiles. So we've covered all the bases. And in your heart, God loves you. And so uh, many of you can guess where we're going to end up, right? At our 1 Corinthians 13 passage. And uh, how many of you at your wedding had uh, read 1 Corinthians 13? Any of you? That's real common at weddings. But I've given you gauges the whole time I've been here, continue to, maybe we should go over it again soon, but the uh, fruit of the Spirit absolutely should be your gauge. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Do those words describe you? And your faith is not proven in the good times, your faith is proven in the hard times. And your love and your joy is not proven in the good times, it's proven in the hard times. Can you have joy when things are not going well? You know, like going for surgery, are you scared or is your faith in the Lord? Do you trust in God? You know, when we pray over people, uh, is your faith in God or do you, as you're being prayed over, do you doubt? 
So what is your heart? I mean, as I read Mark last night and this morning, man, Jesus and Mark and writing about that, uh, the word faith is there a lot, but it's, it's an all-consuming faith. Not partial, not just on Sunday, not once in a while, not just when things are good, but your faith all the time. It is easier to pull a camel through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to get into the gates of heaven. And so uh, that everybody goes to heaven thing is not the truth. It requires all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, as Jesus says in the New Testament. So we we'll read this First Corinthians 13. It will be familiar. If you've gone to church your whole life, you've heard this a lot. If you read the Bible, this is one that you like to read. But I want, you know, I'm praying as I'm talking. I'm uh, trying, I'm praying for the Holy Spirit to touch our hearts as his children, as his church, as his people. As we move forward this year, I want First Corinthians 13. Uh, the Lord has given me this message for us to be our guide. To each and every day, I mean, if you need to print this off and put it on the fridge, read it once a day, that would be awesome. And the way you treat each other, it starts in your house, then it comes to church. If you can't treat the people in your house the way 1 Corinthians 13 says to treat each other, uh, you're, as a Christian, honestly, you're a miserable failure. If you can't pe treat the people in the church, like 1 Corinthians 13 says, uh, once again, uh, that should be a clear sign. You're not getting it. And you need to pray. You need to change. How many of you think or know, you don't have to raise your hand, but you need to change some things in your life? And these are the pages. These are the words of God that tell us where we stand and how we should live. Uh, when you read the Bible and it tells you something, are you right or is the Bible right? You know, and the Bible is always right. And that great judgment day comes, and uh, you know, it says you're supposed to have a healthy fear of God. Amen. But think about your judgment day when you stand face to face with God, and He says, "Well, what about this?" And you say, "Well, I know that preacher told me, and I know I read your word, but I just didn't like it, and I didn't agree." And so I think you should have changed that. And what does God say to that? It is like, you know, nice knowing you. Enjoy the, enjoy the lake of fire. And so here we go with 1 Corinthians 13. But uh, as we read this, we'll take our time, not read it through, through it quickly. And if at any part, at any time, any of these words touch your heart, underline them, remember them, read it again when you get home. Read it all week, all month, all year. Because this is our goal. These are beautiful words. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but I have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. So look at your neighbor and say, I love you. Yeah, but is it true? If I have prophetic powers, if I, you know, if I can preach the word, if I can teach the word, if I can see uh, what's coming, if I have great wisdom, and I understand all mysteries, and I have all knowledge, and if I have all the faith, so as to move mountains, because Jesus said, if you have enough faith, you can move a mountain, right? But I have not love, I am nothing. So, you know, you can learn the whole Bible. You can go to whatever classes you want to. Uh, you can have all the gifts of the Spirit, but if you're not doing them out of love for God and love for each other, it doesn't matter. If I give away all I have, so sell all I have and give it to the poor, back to the camel story. And I deliver up my body to be burned. So if you sacrifice yourself but you're not doing it out of love. You're doing it for attention. You're doing it because you know it's the right thing to do. You're doing it to draw a glory to yourself. You do it for any of those reasons other than for the kingdom of God, for the glory of God. Then you gain nothing in God's eyes. 
And if you're truly acting in love, it says in verse 4, love is patient and love is kind. Do those words describe you? Are you patient? You know, in the uh, making yourself patient, you know, I'm not going to say anything even though my whole body's turning red. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're not really patient, but you're trying to be. Uh, it's a change of nature. It's a change of heart. We talked about in Bible study, the word repent doesn't mean to say I'm sorry. It means to change, a change of heart. And so with any of these things, it's not just the action, it's the change of heart. Love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable, it is not resentful, and that goes with forgiveness. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. So uh, the testament to that is, uh, how many of you are married? How many of you have never had an issue in your marriage? Right? <laughs> so, yeah, all the married people giggle because Marriage is work, right? It's a living organism. There's good days, there's bad days, there's good 10 minutes, there's awesome 10 minutes. But it endures, right? Part of love uh, is over time. It's not just that giggly feeling that teenagers have. So love never ends. And as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass away. If we know in part, then we prophesy in part, but when we perf the perfect comes, that's when Jesus comes. The partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child, I thought like a child, I reasoned like a child, and when I became a man, when I finally grew up, when I finally matured, does everyone grow up? Does everyone mature? The answer is no. How many people do you know that, uh, you know, God doesn't give me what I want. God doesn't say what I want. The Bible doesn't say what I want, so I'm not coming to church. I can't agree with it unless it gives me what I want. But when I became a grown-up, and I became a man, when I became a woman, I gave up the childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face, so it would with God. It's face to face. All things will be made clear. And now I know in part, and then I shall know in full, fully, even as I have been fully known. And so God knows all, and things will be revealed in heaven and in the second coming. So now, faith, hope, and love. Everybody say, faith, hope, and love. Faith, hope, and love. You know? And so those things abide, uh, these three, but the greatest of these is love. So the, the part of this sermon, what I want us to have in our hearts as we go forward as a family. Look around this sanctuary. This is our family. Amen? Amen. How many of you plan on going to heaven? Yeah. A lot of you, not all of you. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you, I'm not a hand raiser. I wouldn't raise my hand. But uh, this is our, not just our family here on earth, this is our eternal family. As you look around the sanctuary, we will see each other in heaven. We will see each other in the renewed earth when Jesus comes back. We are friends, literally, brothers and sisters, forever. And it's something our brains, we can't even wrap our heads around that. But it is the truth, you know. Sharon is going to be my secretary in heaven. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> So these things here, I always talk to you and think about, this is a test run, right? Uh, Earth is a test run. I mean, people ask, it comes up, it hasn't come up as much lately as it has in the past in my life. This is a test.
test. The Bible has places where it says, yes, this is a test. God tested these people. They passed, they failed. This is a test. And, and my message as the pastor of the Portage Prairie Methodist Church for us today is to make this a year of love. To grow this church, I mean, numbers are important. We need to grow in numbers. But I'm telling you, man, when we love each other, when people walk through that door and say, this place is different. When they see us talk to each other, we're talking about the love of Jesus and we're talking about each other and caring and praying over the people that are headed to surgery and, and praying and having healing like we've had and genuinely caring. And no one here is selfish. We don't need anyone standing out. One of the coolest things I ever saw in my life is just a little thing that I learned a lot from it. Uh, the only Lutheran, uh, what's the word I want, where the monks hang out? What's the word for that? Yeah, monastery. The only Lutheran one is in Michigan. It's north of Detroit. And I went there for a week, and you know, I love to sing. So you go there, and uh, they sing uh, six times a day. First one's at 4.30 in the morning, something like that. So I never made it to that one. But you go later in the day, and you sing those chants, right? But it says right out the front of, of the chants, do not sing harmony, because they don't want anyone to stand up. And so at church, in the band, uh, wherever we are, our job is not to stand out. Our job is to glorify God. Amen? Amen? Our job is to love each other. Our job is to do whatever we do, all that we say, all that we sing, all that we pray, all that we teach, everywhere we go, to be the hands, the feet of God, to bring the kingdom of God on earth. Another thing I read in Mark, uh, the kingdom of God, it's beautiful, man, but is it true? The kingdom of God is in you. Do you feel that? Do you know that? Do you live that? And that's my prayer, man. When this church gets together two, three nights a week, whatever it is, require whatever brings you to church on those extra nights, plus Sunday morning for worship, uh, when we all have that spirit, when we all are living in the glory of God and have the Shekinah, the light, and are living in with the kingdom of God in our hearts. What an incredible place this will be. Amen. And so I'm going to pray for that anointing for the year for us. So, uh, dear Heavenly Father, as we continue to celebrate Christmas, we know that you sent your Son as the example. Here on earth. May the beauty of the Christmas story touch our hearts because it is the beginning of Jesus' life. And as we begin this year, let the Holy Spirit enter into us in a way that it never has before. Let us have peace in ourselves and in our church as we have never had before. Send your angels, send your spirit, send your mercy, your love into each and every one of us. Help us to become the church that you want us to be. Help us to become the Christians that you want us to be. Challenge us, break us, mold us, help us to see your light. Make all that we do, all that we say, all that we sing, all that we read, all that we pray, glorify your holy name and help us to grow together as a family, to be, as your scripture says, as Jesus said, as Paul said, to be one, one God, one baptism, one church. We just pray this in the beautiful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And all God's children say, Amen. Amen.
Jesus loves you. We are blessed, amen. amen. We're blessed to be here in this beautiful church, to be with these beautiful brothers and sisters in Christ. And I just, uh, can you ever be loved enough? And so as you, uh, as you go, remember the golden rule to do unto others as you have them do unto you, and to uh, love each other the way you want to be loved. What a beautiful road that would be. So if I'm just gonna say everything. Father, thank you for this time together this morning. As we go home, put your love in our hearts and on our lips. And let us let others know what you have done for us. We pray all this in your Son Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you.